What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. Oh man, all these wrestling news sites are terrible. What's the matter, young lad? Ah, Mother Superior! No, don't hit me! Uh, I I mean, I I can't find a good wrestling news site. A good wrestling news site? What's... What's so good about a good wrestling news site anyway? Well, I just need a place where I can get all the, the backstage news and rumors and scoop. All right. Don't hit me. I listen. left the orphanage a while ago. All right, listen, Billy's younger brother. I'm not going to hit you this time. Oh, thank you. But I will tell you about a great wrestling news site. Okay. It's, it's, it's not terrible like the last one, right? It's not terrible like the last one. It's called WrestlingNewsWorld.com. You can get all the latest wrestling news, spoilers, results, all the news from all over the wrestling world. That sounds great. No, you know, it, yes, but you know what? what? It's not going to sound great if you still if you keep up with that mouth of yours. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, again, I left the orphanage a while ago. Uh, if you don't leave, I'm going to tell my parents. I have legal precedent over thirty-seven states. Get back here! No! Oh, stop hitting me! <laughs> WrestlingNewsWorld.com You know when I pick a movie That's when I'm on to pressure now The question always comes back to me What were they thinking now? Hello everyone, this is Brendan from What Were They Thinking? <coughs> Excuse me. Here are the very special episode this week. Um, usually this is the time where we'd introduce the mailbag or a mini episode, but that is not to be the case this time because this time we had a very special interview with three actors from one of the craziest movies ever made, The Room. That's right, three actors from The Room. We had Robin Paris, who plays Michelle. Uh, Carolyn Minow, who plays Lisa's mother. And, of course, Dan Janjigian, who plays drug dealer Chris R. So, check it out. Um, unfortunately, Nathan could not be here for this interview. But, check it out anyway. It's coming up right now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very, very special episode uh, of What Were They, what Were they Thinking podcast. We have three guests, three guests here. Uh, unfortunately, Nathan is not with me today, but uh, this is Brendan here. And we have three of the actors from The Room and also the new web series, uh, The Room Actors, Where Are They Now? So first of all, we have Robin Paris, who played Michelle in The Room. Hello, how are you? We have uh, Carolyn Minot, who played uh, Lisa's mother in The Room. Good morning, everyone. And we have Dan. <laughs> I was just told how to pronounce your last name, and I already forgot. I'll give you five minutes to figure it out. <laughs> um, Dan Janjigian, right? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, right. we have Dan Janjigian who played Chris R in the in the room. So welcome. Um, Thank you. So first of all, I guess before we really jump into it, uh, you have a web series out right now called The Room Actors, Where Are They Now? So um, why don't you tell people like kind of where they can check that out and uh, what it's all about? Uh, yeah, it's um, it's actually not, it hasn't launched online yet. It's going to be launching the week after Thanksgiving on Funny or Die. Um, so you'll be able to go and see it there. 
Um, in the meantime, you can visit our uh, website at www.theroommockumentary.com or our Facebook page, The Room Actors, Where Are They Now, to get behind the scenes like videos and, and in, uh, information about our screenings. We've been on the festival circuit for the past year, uh, just screening at festivals all over the world, actually. There are a ton of web fests out there now so we've been fortunate to be invited to go and show this there which has been really fun um so yeah that's we shot it gosh it was like two years ago now <laughs> um it's been done for over a year and we were looking for an online platform uh, a place that would launch it for us and luckily uh, funny or die uh, jumped on board and um we're super psyched to be launching with them and is it was it easy to kind of put together like did all of you kind of remain in contact after the movie or uh, I'll, I'll answer then other people can jump in but um, through Facebook I, I, we were able to keep in touch a, a lot but I don't think you know right after the movie I think most of us lost touch I, I lost touch with everybody until 2008 when the Entertainment Weekly articles started coming out about the room and we were all I was friends with I became friends on Facebook with Juliet and Dan and um, then we kind of talked over Facebook but we hadn't really seen each other much until we got together to shoot this this uh, mockumentary that's true. Uh, uh, I lost I lost touch with with people um, uh, after right after shooting. In fact, I wasn't even keeping track of what was going. My son would track it online and kept telling me, "Hey, you you should check this out. There's a lot of, of information going on about the room. Tommy's dropping that thing all over the world, and uh, you should check it out." And uh, finally, Greg got in touch with me when he wrote his book. And that the, the the movie that's coming out uh, is based on the disaster artist, and uh, then I, I reconnected with Robin and uh, Kyle and uh, uh, Juliet because uh, he had us in for some question and answer uh, videos too. So uh, that's when I started reconnecting with the group, and it was wonderful seeing everybody again. Yeah, from my end, I had uh, actually. Uh, I'd, I'd kept up, Greg and I had kept up pretty good uh, at the very beginning of the, uh, uh, when the movie came out. I was getting random phone calls from Scott and, and a bunch of these guys saying, oh my God, you got to check this out and come to a screening. And I was still in California at the time. And then actually uh, Robin did uh, a phenomenal job of just kind of reconnecting everybody because Robin and I didn't, uh, Robin, you and I didn't really even know each other on set. I don't think no. we got on set. So it didn't happen until afterwards. And she kind of, she was kind of the glue that got everybody together probably five five, seven years later. Yeah, I don't think Dan and I had ever met until the mockumentary. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, because well, yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't think you really had, you, you didn't have a scene together, so. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were never on set together. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you didn't. Dare to dream. You, you, you didn't rush I wish in. I, I, wish I, had a dream. I wish I had a scene with her, but, you know, not, not <laughs> so lucky. Yeah. yeah, you weren't there to <laughs> save Denny as well. I, I was not one of the people there saving Denny. Everybody else that was there. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess uh, I guess each each of you, uh, if you want to, just tell me like kind of where you were at before before the room and kind of how you got involved with that production. Uh, no, I had just been doing uh, commercials and industrials and. Uh, a couple of, uh, of uh, supporting parts in uh, other uh, independent films and um, came back from vacation and had a stack of mail and I used to subscribe to the uh, uh, Backstage West and my husband was looking through it and he said, hey, there's somebody uh, casting for a mother's role uh, in, uh, in LA. You, you should probably send him a headshot. So I did. And the next thing I knew, I was uh, talking to Tommy, and we were doing some uh, sort of improv w was the way he would uh, uh, conduct his uh, his uh, initial uh, meetings with you. And uh, he kept calling me back, and lo and behold, I wound up being Claudette. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Oh, oh uh, 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 <laughs> maybe I'll maybe just say, say uh, 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 Dan, uh, Dan, Dan, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, my my situation it was it was a weird one for me. I just moved to LA. I um uh, I don't I don't think it's any secret. I'd done bobsledding in the Olympics right before that. That was in like February of that year, and then I think we filmed in March or April. And my 
my roommate at the time, one of my best friends, uh, was Dan Wells, who was the original Mark. So he was the guy that Greg ended up taking his part um, because, <laughs> like most of the people on the original cast, uh, he he had walked off the set. Um, but he had, he had uh, actually told me, hey, you should check this out. They're looking for a guy to play a thug and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I went out there, um, <laughs> kind of went through the same role that uh, Carolyn did. You know, he was kind of having us do these different, like, ad hoc say this or do that or, you know, whatever. And um, uh, long story short, I kind of BS my way into, <laughs> into, the, into the movie. So that was, that was my, uh, my entry into the room. That's so funny. Um, I, I, I just responded to an ad in Backstage West, just like Carol, and I saw it. And I'm like, oh, that I, you know, I was just sending my headshot into basically anything. I had just moved to L.A. like a month before. And I got a call to come to the set, and when I got there, Greg called me to come to the set. He was doing some of the casting, um, and I got there early and because I had a play I was in that night, and I met Tommy, and he asked me all kinds of questions about my background. And then after that, he basically was like, well, I think I'll give you the part. And I'm like, uh, don't you need me to audition or anything? But... Um, so I did eventually audition. I think Greg, I remember Greg Ellery got there and we read the chocolate is the symbol of love scene together for, for, um, for the audition. And then Tommy had us do things like, he was like, you just, you know, your best friend just died. Go. <laughs> and he wanted you to cry, you know, on the spot. And then it, and he was like, you just won the lottery. Go. And um, he would do these like back to back to back. And then if you weren't crying, he, you know, chastised you like, well, what's wrong with you? You know, your best friend just died. And, um, so it was a kind of a crazy experience. I, I thought, you know what, this is wacky. Like, I just moved to L.A., so I thought, I just, and people, I was from North Carolina. I am from North Carolina, and I, I remember people like, oh, people in L.A. are crazy. Oh, there's, you know, so many, you know, errat, uh, erratic kind of crazy people out there. And so when I got here a month later, I met Tommy, and I was just like, okay, yeah, he's just like a typical L.A. person. <laughs> um, and I thought, like, this is the way it is. I was so naive, obviously. i um, but I mean, I knew it was I knew it was bad, but I just uh, thought it was kind of funny and fun to get uh, some footage for my demo reel. Um, so I got a call back and went to that, and then they cast me. But it turns out I didn't know this at the time, but they were already halfway done filming the movie, or they had already filmed a lot of scenes, and they were kind of replacing. Um, Ju- um, Juliet had been playing Michelle, so she um, went and started playing Lisa, and like three other Lisas had quit. And uh, then I was, re- you know, I replaced Juliet and, as the character of Michelle, and they had to reshoot a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, anyway, and that's they cast Greg Ellery at that point too, because I think they knew Kyle Kyle was going to be leaving. He had told Tommy up front he was going to be leaving, um, and he's, you know, if you've seen the room, he's the guy who just kind of comes in, Stephen, and takes over all of Kyle Vogt's lines with no explanation as to why he's there. <laughs> And okay, so it seems to me like with the with the whole thing with the recasting, um, it it almost seems like and he had a he had a number of actors ready for each part, right? Um, it almost seems like uh, he was writing a play or something. I think it is. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, you go. You go. <clears throat> I think this was his baby. It seemed to be something because when he would sometimes he would. Uh, as he would sometimes he would ask me what uh, my opinion about something. I don't believe he ever took it, but he was telling me one time that this was a long thing that he'd been thinking about for a long time, and this was his baby. This was his his um, big deal. He was this was going to be his fantastic movie that he was putting together, and um, I think you know I don't know I think he had a, a rough idea of it somewhere in the back of his mind and it just sort of. Uh, every day got changed or got modified in some way, or it just was kind of a scattered uh, uh, situation of, of how he put the scenes together and what he expected from his actors. He always, whenever I would ask him a question, for instance, does the mother really have cancer? He'd say, well, that's up to you. You you, do, you work with that. You decide. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it would have been a help to know for sure, but... Uh, <laughs> It was all kind of, in a way, it was all kind of improv. There's a lot of, you notice once we, once we got a printed script, it was mostly what we had been sitting around ad-libbing uh, among ourselves, because that, he'd say, you go sit over there, and you just talk as if you were these people. You just decide what their motivation is and whatever. 
So it just, it, what was written was pretty much, I'm thinking, what he heard us ad-libbing uh, all along. So it was, um, it was pretty much, uh, you know, fly by the seat of your pants type of, type of situation. <laughs> well, and yeah, I was going to ask about that too. Uh, the line, the, of course, one of the infamous lines in the movie, uh, I just got the results back. It's definitely breast cancer. Um, that, that just, just dr completely dropped. And the other thing too is uh, uh, Dan uh, comes in as Chris R uh, threatening to shoot uh, Denny we don't we don't really get any reason well we get sort of a slight reason but we don't really get any follow up on that or backstory and i'm just wondering like these these plot threads were they originally fleshed out at all or were they just is that how they actually were in the script well i don't i'll, I'll speak for myself i don't know uh, if, if the ladies have anything different i was the same boat as um, uh, robin when she came in because i was very naive this is the first thing i'd really done and you know, Carolyn's obviously you know a, a pro at this kind of thing. But I walked in, and and you know, the whole idea was that there was supposedly you know this is being shot out of out of order. Um, we're not going to show you the script. So all any of us, and I assume that you guys are in the same boat. We were only shown what we were going to be filming at that time, and I only had apparently this one little forty-five second or minute-long scene. And so the indication was hey, there's going to be some stuff that's going to lead into this, and then there's going to be some stuff that's going to come later. I'm just not going to show it to you now, so figure it out. And that was – so the whole time I was filming, I thought that there was going to be more to it because I, I was on set for two weeks, which was insane for the fact that this was <laughs> shot so many times and it was just this really short little – this little scene. But, um, yeah, for me, the script was just this this piece that was going to continue to be added to, and, and uh, you know, he kept talking about how Chris R. was going to be this major role in the picture – Blah blah blah, and you know you all know how that ended out. <laughs> two two weeks. Wow. Um. Yeah. I well, the production of this film in general was notoriously long, I believe. Oh yeah. yeah was, I don't know how yeah. long it was, guys. It was. I, I was just there for part of it, but you guys were probably there. I mean, Carolyn, you might have been there since the beginning. I think I'm the only one that was there from the beginning to the end. I, I didn't get fired, and I didn't leave. <laughs> I just hung in there. I wanted to see where this thing was going. When did when did each of you kind of get the idea? Maybe you did right away, but when did you each of you kind of get the idea? Is like, wow, what what are we? What are what kind of movie are we making? <laughs> what what is this man trying to make? <laughs> I think everybody uh, was wondering that because it wasn't only the actors that were there one day and gone the next. It was also the crew, pe crew people. If, if they would be there, if anybody that would say anything contrary to Tommy's wishes would, would disappear. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, it was, uh, I, I think, oh, I can't, what was his name, Raul or whatever the, the first um, uh uh, camera or, or director we had, or I, I, I wasn't really a director. I, mean, I can't remember exactly what he was. He was the one that had already told him. He and Sandy had both told Tommy that they could only be there for so many weeks because they had other commitments. He he would listen to them, but everybody else who would say no, we need to do it this way because that's not going to work for this reason. They were out of there, and you just didn't want to go up against Tommy. And uh, so it was kind of chaotic in that in that situation, in that in that sense. And one thing the actors learned is if you were auditioning for anything else, you didn't want to tell Tommy about it because for some reason he would take that as a stab in the back. <laughs> and I, I mentioned to him once, I said, you know, if an actor wants to leave early and you don't really need him, it's kind of a courtesy thing in the industry to say, go ahead and go to your audition and give him that that leeway but for some reason tommy considered that an insult that he would actually have another project going at the same time or, or whenever and um i don't know why he felt that way but but again you know i think this was may have been the first thing tommy did i'm not sure and i don't think he was completely uh aware of, of exactly what was going on at all times but yes, the actors all, when we talked among ourselves, in fact, one, I think it was Phil said, you know, I don't know if I even want to put this on my resume. And I said, oh, yeah, by all means. I said, nobody's going to see this thing. It's going to go to, to video and it'll gather dust somewhere on a blockbuster shelf 
and they'll throw it out. So when we came back to do Robin's work, he says, you know, you lied to me. You mm-hmm. told me nobody would ever see that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> disappear and, and we'd never hear from it again and that's kind of what we hoped I mean, yeah <laughs> they would just fade off into obscurity and you received me, like, quite the opposite <laughs> yeah I, for me I got called to the set and they were like I, they I mean literally he called me on the phone he's like how fast can you get to the set I got there within 45 minutes and then I was filming the chocolate as a symbol of love scene within 10 minutes, like 15 minutes of arriving and the clothes I already had on makeup. I already had on like they just sort of powdered me up and sent me out there to shoot the chocolate as a symbol of love scene. So halfway through that, I was like, this scene is crazy. Like, and I did definitely, that was an improv. That was all Tom. I'm going to give Tommy credit for all of those lines, <laughs> the amazing lines in that scene. I gave him full credit for that. But, um, but I think after that scene was over is when I was like, what is this? Like, and I'm, I have a thoughtful script. I don't know if you guys, I never saw a script at all. So I, in terms of your question about like whether it was just sort of anything was flushed out, I don't even know. I mean, I know there was a script, but Tommy told me, I asked him for the script because I was like, I just want to know where things fall in the context. So he was like, well, I think you're going to steal it. I'm afraid you'll steal it. So I'm not going to give it to you, you know. <laughs> So <laughs> he was afraid you would make your un- unauthorized remake of the room. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, of course, that's what James Ferentino and uh, what is it, Seth Rogen, that have done. <laughs> make, a, make a documentary of the making of the room. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I have a specific okay, so I have a specific question for uh, uh, Robin, and then one for Carolyn and Dan because I know you both were both here for these scenes. So um, late in the movie, there's a party scene where uh, Tommy and Greg end up fighting. Now I heard this somewhere, and I don't remember where it was, but I heard somewhere that Carol, uh, sorry, Robin, you had a hard time kind of keeping it together in the background. Is that is that right? Yeah, for me, I was, um, my my husband was visiting the set that day because I had told him how funny it was. I was like, you have to come to see this. Brilliant. It's like, like nothing you've ever seen before. So that was the scene we shot that day, that night. And I remember I just, it was so funny. It struck me as so funny that, that they would be like doing this awkward slow dance and that, I, it just seemed like none of it was logical. None of it was organic or natural. And I just laughed so hard during that scene while they're fighting and they're pushing each other. <laughs> and I'm in the background and I look at myself on screen and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm not laughing in that scene. Because inside I felt like I was dying with laughter. And for me, that was the moment on set when I was like, this thing could really be big if anybody ever saw this. I think... If no one will see it, <laughs> but if anybody ever did, it could totally get a cult following. And I remember I told my husband that at the time, I was like, no one will see this. No one will. But it is so stilted and unnatural and like weird <laughs> that if anybody ever does, this this could like blow up and, you know, never thought that would actually happen. But for me, it was really funny being on set. I mean, I don't know if you, how you guys feel <laughs> Carolyn and Dan, but like there were some really funny moments when I was actually in a scene, and I was like, "This is this is so crazy." Just it's so awkward, and but that's just the way it, we're being directed. That's the way it's written, and we're doing our best, and let's just try to make this thing work. But um, anyway, so <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a hard time. It <laughs> yeah, I, I I rewatched just that scene earlier today, and I was trying to I was trying to see if I could point if I could spot it. But it looked like you were keeping it together fairly well, but. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Oscar for that. You do. You do. I'll. Uh, I got connections. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, and the other specific one I wanted to mention, of course, infamously, when Tommy shoots on the rooftop, um, he of course does not shoot on a real rooftop. He put up a giant uh, green screen uh, in an indoor location. Now, Dan and Carolyn, you're both on that set for for a scene. Um, I guess, uh, Dan, uh, what was it like? Was there actually, is this a true story that there, there was actually a location, uh, very close to that indoor location where they could have easily shot on a rooftop? Well, first let me say it was an, actually an, an outdoor location. Oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, we were, we were, we were right next to, uh, if you look at the, the parking lot that we were, that everything was filmed in, 
they had basically picked another corner of this parking lot, built out this screen. It's really funny because every time I watch the movie, you look at the brick facade that borders the roof, and it's just funny because it looks like somebody just took, I mean, which is what they did. They just took two walls and they stuffed them together so that, you know, it's like one wall finishes and the other one's butted up against it. Um, but, yeah, as far as, there wasn't another, if you're asking if there was another rooftop nearby or whatever, not, not really, but uh, the whole thing was interesting because they had had me come back for that scene. I'd been gone at this point for a couple of weeks, and, and Tommy was con- <laughs> concerned about calling me directly because he, I wasn't very happy when I left because I'd been there for that whole two-week time. Uh, he had to get Greg to call me to come back to film that, that last scene, and he, you know, he and I had a good friendship, so that was part of it. But I kind of renegotiated everything to come back out because it was just such a waste at that point. You know, I didn't I didn't see the point of coming out and filming this drug dealer scene that should take place in an alley if it's going to take place anywhere uh, on top of a rooftop. So it was it was an interesting transition to come back out. And and I guess uh, and Carolyn, like, what was your what was your reaction to seeing like uh, them filming this kind of scene like this? Well, it was interesting. Uh, yeah, doing a rooftop uh, in a parking lot at Burns and Sawyer there on Highland. Um, it was, uh, but I, I don't know. I thought, well, you know, it looks like it might work. I guess it looks like a, uh, I guess it's going to look like a, a rooftop in San Francisco. And then, of course, there was the problem with the background. One minute it would be uh, when the camera would would be focused on Greg, for instance, the sky would be overcast. Then it would be clear when it was on Tommy, when it would switch to Tommy or something. So it, sometimes the weather was a little a little disparate there, and, and you weren't quite sure what was going on. And then we shot one scene also at night at the other end of the parking lot that was supposed to be the real spot, uh, it, that was supposed to be... Uh, the outside uh, during the party, during the infamous party scene, uh, so part of it was supposed to be outside when they all leave the room to go outside, and that's when we uh, in the evening were shooting uh, uh, also in the parking lot there in a, in a different location. Um, but I just sort of accepted it as being. I assumed everybody knew what they were doing, the guys who set it up and everything. And I thought they did a good job for a parking lot. In fact, I thought the people for the interior, the people that did the set decoration on the interior, which was a storeroom behind Burns and Sawyer, I thought they did, with what they had to work with, I thought they had done a a fairly decent job. And uh, those were the only two things I thought that were mostly coherent about the movie was was the at least some of the background stuff looked reasonably uh authentic and reasonable so uh that was my take on it anyway i i i do have to ask if anyone can if anyone knows um about the spoons the, the first... well i didn't i didn't understand for well, the first time i went to one of uh, the midnight showings uh, the kids were throwing spoons all over the audience. And I thought, what, what was the spoons? And it escaped me until I think it was Robin or, or Juliet that told me, well, in the apartment in Tommy and uh, Lisa's apartment, there was a, a picture of spoons sitting on the table that I had forgotten about completely. And I, oh, okay, because I got the Nerf footballs that they used to throw back and forth. Yeah. But I, I was kind of at a loss for what well, about the spoons. I I, I think I, I thought there's no way that the camera will really focus on those framed photos of spoons, and that it'll just be something in the background that no one sees. But mm. for some reason, there are a lot of pan shots that go right by the spoon, <laughs> like in the room, the final movie. You know, like you kind of pan past an actor, and then it shows pans the spoons, and it's almost like the camera guys were sort of playing a joke, like they. <laughs> Like yeah, it could be. And... I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I guess this is this is for everyone. I guess I'll start. We'll go uh, <laughs> Robin, Carol, and Dan. Um, so what? now after the movie came out, you said it wasn't until about 2008 where it started to pick up steam uh, and people were kind of, you know, watching it, holding, fe- uh, holding screenings and all that stuff. Um what was your initial reaction to that? Were you were you kind of were you kind of put off by it at all, or was you just kind of like on board right away for that? At first, I was shocked. I mean, I had because I knew it had kind of 
it disappeared for a while, and no, not many people knew about it. That the billboard was up here in L.A. on Fountain and Highland forever, and I think that's what kind of started people going to see it, and, and some celebrities became fans. And I had just graduated. I graduated from UCLA Film School in 2008, so I had just finished film school, and no one at UCLA Film School knew that I was in the room and mentioned it or anything. <laughs> So that was just good. It's not like you want to lead with that, you know, when you meet people, but um, necessarily. Uh, but um, so then I started getting emails from people um, at, from film school and people I had gone to undergrad with like, hey, I was at this weird. My friend is a fan of this movie, The Room, and I was at it and I saw you in it. And I'm like, what? Some guy in San Francisco, another friend of mine who was a writer for Entertainment Weekly. His name's Dave Carger. He um, his. He was, um, let's see, Paul Rudd's wife was apparently a huge fan of the room, and she had commissioned a theater to show it for either he had done it for her, Paul Rudd had done it for her birthday or vice versa, and my friend Dave, who was the writer for Entertainment Weekly, went to that screening and saw it and was like, oh my God, and he Facebooked me and, you know, contacted me and was like, I just saw you in this. It's crazy, and um, that's when I first heard about big celebrities, you know, Paul Rudd being a fan of it. Um, and then Entertainment Weekly that same year, because that was 2008, came out with a big story written by Clark Collis, who Dave, like, you know, Dave worked, my friend Dave worked for EW then, too. So, you know, Clark called me and he called all the room actors and did this big spread um, in Entertainment Week. It's like a five-page spread. And they profiled, you know, David Wayne and, you know, Paul Rudd, uh, Kristen Bell, a ton of, a lot of the Judd Apatow uh, actors um, were fans of The Room. And so they profiled them, they interviewed them as well. And that really helped The Room sort of explode. And I, I guess I was like, just, I was shocked that it had gotten to this point. I didn't realize the celebrities had become fans and I was just surprised. And then I was like, oh crap, like now what do I do? I'm in the worst movie ever made. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I had total mixed emotions about it. I was definitely not super psyched at first. Um, I thought it was funny to be interviewed and to talk about it, but I just didn't know, like, this is my, like, this is my legacy. Okay, great. Like, I <laughs> don't know if this is, like, the way I want to go down in history or whatever, but, um, yeah, so for me, I mean, I wrote a lot of, com- I've got my screen a degree in screenwriting at UCLA, so I wrote a lot of comedy, a lot of scripts, and, and that's why I ended up doing The Room Actors, Where Are They Now?, is because I write comedy, I'm in the bad movie, like, why not put it together and do this funny web series? That was how I tried to kind of reclaim a little dignity for um, everybody, (laughs) me, um, maybe uh, the rest of us, I don't know. I just kind of wanted us to be able to poke fun at it and laugh at it and embrace it ourselves and have a good time with it instead of just kind of totally being wrapped up with have like and having no agency or no say or any, you know. So uh, just wanted to kind of in- inject ourselves into the conversation a little bit. Um, and that was, for me, the way kind of to heal <laughs> and the way to be like, okay, I, you know, this is funny. This is cool. Like, it took me maybe a year or more to, like, come to that point. Um, but now I'm re- really psyched, and I think it's hilarious, and I'm really psyched to be involved in it and think it's really a funny thing to have experienced and, and lived through and all of that. Awesome. And uh, and Carolyn, what about you? Uh, yes. Uh, well, as I say, I just more or less forgot about it. And my son, but my son kept talking about it that he was seeing these things on on online. And uh, about uh, what was it? Five years ago, they were having their twelve year uh, anniversary showing in Westwood uh, at midnight. And I told him, I said, "You really want me to drive?" all the way from San Clemente to Westwood at I see a midnight show. I said, I don't know. And my son said, no, no, no. My fiance and I are going, I think you should come. And so I said, okay. So I went. I didn't think anybody would even remember me. I saw Tommy and I walked up to him and, oh, he threw his arms around me. It's wonderful to see you. All of a sudden, this flood of people came toward me. Oh, there she is. And I thought, my God, these, these kids really, because most of them look like college students. And I thought, good grief, these people really recognized me from, and evidently it had become such a cult favorite that, uh, and I was signing people's t-shirts and signing and having my picture taken with them and everything, and I thought, good grief, who knew? Um, Probably the thing I I was the least impressed with that I had done to that point was the thing I was known for, 
And, uh, you know, hooray for Hollywood. You never know where it's going to take you. And what was what was the reaction uh, from you when, when all this kind of took off? Uh, well, amazement, for one thing. And uh, and like I said, a couple of years before that, uh, Greg got uh, Juliet and, and Robin and Kyle and I uh, together to do a, uh, he, he did a video uh, as a, uh, to uh, hype his book, that his the disaster artist. And um, and Tommy showed up, and Greg had a get-together, again, uh, promoting his book sales. He and the man that his co-author that wrote The uh, uh, the Disaster Artist at a, at a uh, theater in Hollywood. And again, a lot of the fans were there, and there was a question and answer uh, period. And I think they showed the movie at that, at that evening. And uh, although each time I see the movie, it's been uh, changed somewhat. Things have been taken out, and other things have been put back in, and uh, there has been some, some change in, the, in the, the movie itself. But what amazed me was one night I was watching TV, and they were showing, uh, they were talking about this film that was uh, being shown in uh, New York. And here's Alec Baldwin and Dustin Hoffman, and these guys standing here saying, uh, Baldwin was saying, I've been trying to see this movie. It's always sold out. By the time I get here tonight, I got here early, and I'm waiting in line to go see it. And I thought, I thought who, who knew that would be? <laughs> because a couple of things I did I thought were reasonably good, and I thought maybe they might get a little notice, but who knew? <laughs> this was the one that was going to make me known, I guess, in some circles anyway. <laughs> The uh, the first thing you know, you're ye- you're yelling on a fake rooftop, rooftop, and the next thing you know, Alec Baldwin is watching your movie. <laughs> who, who knew? Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, and finally, uh, Dan, uh, what was the reaction like for you? No, it's been cool. I I do uh, I, I do sales primarily as a job, and and so I'm traveling all over the place, and it's funny because I've I've uh, uh, when I first started, the first time I really uh, was kind of blown away by it, I was in New York. My brother and sister both live in New York, and and uh, David Crosby had done something out at, at the uh, uh, the Village Theater out there, and my brother's like, "Yeah, you got to go check this out." And one of the guys there had reached out to me, so I I called him. I said, "Well, I'm in town. You know, if you want me to come by." And he got really excited. So I actually ended up going out there for two or three shows. But uh, the cool thing was, every time we went out, it was this un- unbelievable showing. They had people lined up around the block. I mean, it was five, six hundred people there. They had a, an actual band that was playing in the middle of the show. Uh, that would get out and do stuff, and it was it was the first time I really saw what was going on, and and from there I got a chance to go to shows in Seattle and Chicago, and uh, I mean all over the place, and and uh, it was just it was a neat experience. I owned a uh, a restaurant and music venue in Austin for a long period of time too, so we'd have people come in, and it was just random. Like I, I remember once uh, being out in I was in Spain. And this actually happened a lot more than I, I care to admit, but, you know, you'd have people walk up and they'd be like, hey, you know, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to be rude, but were you potentially in this movie? And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I was in that movie for like 45 seconds. <laughs> and to have people recognize you, is, I think it's super cool. I mean, I, I know I know Michelle has been struggling, or Michelle, sorry, Robin. You know, Robin's struggling with her, you know, whether or not it's it's a good thing, a bad thing, or whatever, and... I, I got to be honest with you. I love it. I think it's super cool. Uh, I had a chance to watch uh, the the movie Disaster Artist when it uh, when it premiered at South by Southwest, and I'm laughing because a lot of things that that the girls are talking about are actually portrayed in there. Um, you know, like the whole idea that Carolyn was talking about people weren't allowed to go to or you know to other auditions or whatever. Well, they, that's a central theme to part of the movie, where you know Greg had gotten this opportunity to be on uh, Malcolm in the Middle. And um, and Tommy literally put his foot down and said, "No, you know, you can't go." It was almost like it's exactly as Carolyn said it. So I'm, I'm excited for uh, what's coming next. I think you guys are going to love this movie if you haven't seen it yet. And uh, and the entire the entire uh, journey has been it's been a blast, man. I can't I can't say anything bad about it. It's been very very fun. I'm so jealous that you got to see the Disaster Artist. I totally it was wanted good. To it was oh, really have you good. seen it already? I, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm, I'm waiting for it to. I think it's supposed to come out next month. Uh, yeah, it'll be yeah November December. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 there's like a limited release date in early December, so I'm not sure when it's going coming out wide. But uh, if you're in LA, I'm sure you'll get it everywhere. <laughs> I'm on the East Coast, so we're a bit limited here, but um, hopefully it comes here as well. 
I think it's isn't it supposed to be an all uh, isn't it opening wide on December eighth? I hope so. I thought in all the major markets. I, I oh, is it December? Because I I heard November, but that I wouldn't swear to it. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm anxious to see it. I was hoping maybe they would give the original cast members a, a cameo or something, you know, but uh, that didn't happen. Although I think Tommy and Greg both both have cameos in it. <laughs> we tried. We tried. I was I was yeah. Kind of, them up left and right. I think I think Robin was doing the same, but yeah, they wouldn't. They I think they just wanted to keep it completely separate. So then I have to ask, uh, Dan, since you did get a chance to see it, um, how do you feel about the uh, the people that kind of portrayed the three of you? Well, you, you know, the funny thing is, it wasn't as much a portrayal. I mean, the the room, uh, the movie, the room was actually probably more looked at as a as a uh, another actor in the movie, the disaster artist. Like the, it's not a remake of, of the room. So if you go in there thinking that you're going to see a remake of the room, you're, you're not going to see that. It's really more about the relationship between Tommy and Greg and what led them to actually do the movie. And then the movie plays a really kind of fun part in it. But you know, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's fun to watch. I think all the parts are played really well. Nothing was, you know, it, it, it wasn't made to be a parody of the actors. It wasn't made to be a parody of the movie. It was meant to be a real life, you know, a portrayal of these two guys that were trying to make it big in Hollywood and couldn't do it the traditional way, so they decided to make a movie instead, and that's really what the what the movie's all about. Yeah, and I've heard that it's sort of uh, it's sort of very like it's almost like sentimental in a way. Like it's not like you said, it's not meant to be really making fun, other than you know, lighthearted poking fun at Tommy or whatever. But um, yeah, so. That's good. <laughs> um, I think there was a lot of sincerity in Tommy's effort to make the room, um, and that came through in the book. And the friendship is element was really cool and, and touching, and very the very very funny. So if they if they were able to capture all of that in the movie, then I can I would imagine the movie is really good. Okay, mm-hmm. they did a great job. <laughs> well, I guess I have just one kind of uh, final thing to add. I'm just curious um, uh, for all three of you. Have you had a lot of uh, interaction with Tommy since the kind of since the filming of the room? I haven't, except for the uh, midnight showing. I told you, and and I think one of the other um, uh, showing it may have been for Greg's book uh, promotion. Uh, Tommy would ask me to come up on the stage for question and answer thing. In fact, he had all of the people there. I think he had Juliet and Robin up there too. Uh, to answer questions from the uh, from the audience, but that's been about it. I haven't had any other uh, interaction with Greg or uh, or Johnny since then. So um, mostly, it's been a reuniting of uh, the actors for, for uh, Robin's project, and that's been great. I've enjoyed that a lot. So, and it was it was a good experience. It was it didn't turn out the way most of us would have planned. But you know, it, it it could have been a very mediocre, somewhat good movie. The fact that it, it was as bad as it was has what put it on the map. Why people love it? They love it because it's so bad, and that's the that's the charm of the thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You go to one extreme or the other, right? Yeah, it could have been like I said, just another mediocre independent film. It, you got to, uh, and like I say, you've got to hand it to Tommy. He showed that thing all over. I've talked to people in uh, Denmark, in Canada, in the UK, in Iceland, for heaven's sake, you know, uh, that wanted to do exactly what we're doing today. Uh, wanted to, some of them came to my house and, and set up their cameras and uh, uh, did the interview there. Uh, it was uh, it was an amazing. I've never I certainly have never had any recognition for anything I've done before other than this. So I can't say that I've uh, I've been abused by it by any way. <laughs> and, uh, and and I know Dan, you said you were you were on set for two weeks and then you came back for the uh, for the ro- uh, the rooftop scene. Now, um, did you do you, have you any contact with Tommy at all since then as well? With the exception of seeing him, I, I, obviously I saw him at the South by Southwest uh, premiere for the Disaster Artist. So that was that was, was kind of surreal because the picture I've always had in my head of him was the picture of the guy that I you know worked with ten years ago, twelve years ago at the uh, you know when the film was gosh oh my gosh has it been fifteen years now <laughs> it's been like fifteen <laughs> years but that's that's the picture in my mind of him and he's he's just kind of so much smaller and so much you know like he's he, he doesn't look like the same guy but. Um, 
it was kind of fun to see him. It was cool to catch up with him and just kind of see who was up. Uh, I mean, he's really, really quiet. He didn't, you know, I didn't get the big hug from him that that, that uh, Carolyn got, um, but that's okay. <laughs> it was more, <laughs> it was more just this kind of like awkward. Hey, man, what's up? You know, I, I, it's uh, it's good to see that he's doing well, and I'm excited to see uh, their next projects because I know he and Greg have some other projects they're doing right now too. Awesome. And uh, Robin, what about you? Um, I've seen him off and on here and there. Um, one time, my husband and I were behind him. He was driving a room Hummer, uh, and he had the room going in the Hummer. It was dark, so you could see the room going, the movie going, and hit, the room was painted on the. We drove up beside, pulled up beside the Hummer, and it was Tommy driving. So I had that funny interaction. But um, <laughs> so, and then a friend of mine just texted me uh, this week and saw him saw the same Hummer on the freeway. And same deal, was like Tommy so, driving it around as an advertisement it, for the room. It, it, it was playing like on the side of the Hummer. No, in, inside the Hummer, but like if you were behind it, you. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. That, <laughs> that is some. <laughs> Sounds like something Tommy would do. That, that, is, that is some stealthy promotion. <laughs> so I think I think I know the answer to this one, but I'm just gonna unanimously. Uh, T- Tommy said. Tommy says, of course, in retrospect, oh, this was meant to be a black comedy. Um, I'm sure it, it was not. <laughs> no liar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that, that is just that is his response most most of the time. I find to the uh, the questions of what kind of movie this is. <laughs> it's a black comedy. He, uh, yeah, revisionist history for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone has backed him up on this claim. I don't think so. No, <laughs> and no one ever will. You gotta give him credit, though. You gotta give him credit because he ran with it, and he, instead of trying to fight it, he went with it. And, and uh, you know, I, I give him a lot of credit for for the amount of work and effort and emotion he put into it, and then turning on a dime and saying, "Yeah, you're right. This was supposed to be a comedy." He just accepted what the what the audience took from it. I, I actually give him a lot of respect for that. Do you think? Yeah, he really had milked it and it made it work for him. I mean, you know, it, it's brilliant marketing. Do you think there's uh there's like something deep down he's a little bit up he's a little bit sad that it didn't that it turned out kind of an op the opposite way of what he wanted? Mm-hmm. Nope. I think so. I think so because I think he thought he would touch people with his with the room. This poor guy who is this wonderful guy who everybody took advantage of, you know. And I think to him that was a very touching he wanted that story to come out. And in fact, he told me that a couple of times. This is the story I've been wanting to to do for a long time. So I think it was something very important to him. But he was smart enough to go go with the flow and decide and realize what what turn the movie had taken. And he certainly made a hit of it. Yeah, I I love the I love the two very different answers. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I feel like instead of touching people, he inappropri- inappropriately groped them. <laughs> <laughs> the people, the people were his red dress. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Very, very Trumpian. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. If he reached for crotches. if Tommy could make a biopic and star in a, a Donald Trump biopic, I think I think the world is ready for that. Oh gosh, that is now that would be something. I have that person. <laughs> Uh, if somebody could superimpose Trump in that scene, I would love that. Please do that and send it to me. <laughs> the red dress scene. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the infamous red dress. Um, so, I guess then, um, just, to, just to get back at the beginning, we were talking about the room actors, where are they now? Because that's the project you're uh, working on right now. So, um, you did mention that uh, you were... It's going to be released a week after Thanksgiving, and for you Canadian listeners out there, that's American Thanksgiving, so that's in November. Um, so uh, just give us a little, maybe like a little bit of a uh, synopsis of like what kind of what that's all about. So ba- basically, from what I know, it, it's the room actor, uh, the people from the room, uh, the three of you, and and many others, of course, um, are being f- like followed by a detective, and that's as far as I know. <laughs> Yeah, it's a kind of like a documentarian is trying to track us down, the room actors, and figure out what happened to us after we were in the worst movie ever made. And so he visits each person, um, and we get a window into what their life is like now. Um, and everything is fictionalized. Uh, it's you know we take kind of the joke of like what happened, what would happen to you if you're in the worst movie ever made, and sort of exaggerate it. 
And, you know, kind of a lot of the jokes are that we can't really escape the room. So the room is like creeping into our lives in all these ways unintentionally or some and in some cases intentional. Some of the characters are embracing the fact that they were in the room and milking it, making it work for themselves. Um, And just we do a lot of like room uh, Easter eggs. So there's different kind of inside jokes buried throughout. Um, And it's designed for room fans, but hopefully still really funny and entertaining for non-room fans. And maybe watching it will make some people want to see the room. I don't know. Um, But, yeah, we just wanted to have fun with it. And everyone was such like such a good sport. All the room actors did an amazing job and they're all so good in it. And it's just I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um. No, that's great. Uh, so, guys, it, people out there, if you have not seen The Room, see The Room. Um, it's not your typical, you know, oh, this movie is uh, this is a crazy bad movie. This is this movie transcends bad movies. So, if you haven't seen this movie uh, from the mind of a man with a very loose command of the English language, um, <laughs> trying to direct and write and produce a movie and not uh, he what he didn't no I, I would say he did not edit it though i don't believe i don't think no i feel i i feel bad for that poor editor <laughs> trying to place his shots together but um yeah i guess that's it i just want to thank all of you for doing this um and uh be sure to check out the room actors where are they now again uh what's the so what's the actual date on that november um, yeah, let's see. Let me check here. I think it's like November 29th or 28th. Um, is that yet? Um, so probably 29th, which is a Wednesday, um, will be the day we launch it. And we'll all be blasting stuff, putting stuff on the social media, letting people know to, to tune in there. And I'm trying to kind of get the word out about that. Um, but yeah, please watch it. Send your friends there. Um, you know, it's just it's it's a complimentary project to the room and the disaster artist. So it kind of adds adds on, adds a little fun and festivity and jokiness or whatever wackiness. Um, and I don't know. We have more episodes. We have I'm filming actually another one in two weeks because we got a little money from a corporate sponsor. Soylent uh, gave us a little money to shoot another episode. So we're doing that in two weeks. So we'll be launching four episodes. And then we've got six more written and ready to shoot, um, featuring each episode features a different room actor. Uh, I would love to shoot all of those, so but we just need the money. And, um, you know, the more people you send to go watch it on Funny or Die, the increases our chances of being able to finish the series and make more. So, yeah, tell everyone, you know, if you have room fan friends, um, send, them, send them our way. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, so I, I guess... Uh... I guess we'll just wrap it up there. Thank you all very much. Uh, Robin Paris, uh, Carolyn Minot, and Dan Janjigian. Got it right the first time this time. <laughs> um, do you, uh, Dad, is there any, like, where, sorry, I should have asked this too. Um, is there a Twitter account as well that they can follow along? Uh, well, I can, yeah, the, 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 the at room act, at the room actors is our Twitter account. And then at the room actors is our Instagram also. Um, mine is at Robin O. Paris. And then you guys, why don't you give your Twitter and your social media too? Dan, you're like... I've got Chris Dash, I've got Chris Dash R.org, which will be posting a bunch of stuff on there. And, and I'm actually... Uh, I kind of ran a review of the uh, of the Disaster Artist that I'm going to be releasing this next uh, week or two as well. So that'll have, that'll have some updates for those of you guys that want a preview of what will be coming out in November or December. Cool. Well, thank you so much for having us, Brendan. We, we appreciate it. No, thank you all very much. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, make sure to check out The Room and The Room Actors. Where are they now? Yes. By <laughs> yes. all means. Thank you. And the, the www.theroommockumentary.com is our website. Excellent. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thanks for it. Wowzers. <laughs> that was awesome. Love talking to these people. Great stories about the room. Dan was on set for two weeks for that one short scene. Crazy. Um, check out the room if you haven't seen it. I, if you haven't seen it by this point, you're missing out. Uh, check out the room actors. Where are they now? Web series coming up on November 28th on funnierdie.com. As for us, uh, since this is our mini episode, I guess I'll just reveal next week's movie. It will be, in honor of October, 
the human centipede. That's right, the human centipede. And I'm sure even if you haven't seen it, you know what it's all about. So check that out. And join us next week, and be sure to, again, watch The Room and The Room Actors. Where are they now? Check it out, guys. Check it out. And if you don't check it out, then I've got one question for you. What were you thinking?